In this video, I'd like to show you the new carcass construction features in version 2.0, Cab Rider version 2.0. So if we open up the settings and look at the carcass tab, we'll see some new parameters here. Um, under the back attachment method, uh, whereas in 1.0 we used to have just a planted back, in other words, screwed on, uh, we now have um, some inset options. Inset full, inset sides only, sides and top, and sides and bottom. So let's take a look at those. Um, first off, uh, we'll look at my model here and just look at the carcass. And if we look at this carcass right here, we'll see our back is simply uh, planted on the back or screwed on. So if we want to make changes in that, uh, we're going to go back here and go to our carcass and uh, let's just let's pick first off uh, inset full and the default settings that come here are uh, a carcass groove width of 3 eighths of an inch we're using half inch backs uh, a groove depth of uh, 3 eighths of an inch and um, an inset distance of 3 quarters of an inch and uh, we'll see what that does when we redraw the cabinet. So I've, I've reset those settings. And I'm just going to choose this cabinet here and say Cab Writer, uh, redraw selected cabinets. Use the stored defaults. No, because we changed the defaults. And we're going to look at just the carcass again. And if we zoom in a little bit closer, we're going to see a difference here. So we've got an inset back. If we look here at the top and measure this, we've got our 3 eighths wide groove by 3 eighths of an inch deep. And the, the groove starts 3 quarters of an inch in on the far side. So that leaves us 3 eighths of an inch of meat here. Um, and of course, you can change any of those parameters. And if we uh, look a little closer here, and um, I'm just going to unlock the back here, and I'm just going to say view, uh, component edit, hide rest of model, and we're going to take a closer look and see what, what our back looks like here. So you can see now it's rabbited around the outside edge all the way around. If I measure this, though, the length of my tongue is just 11 30 seconds. So it's a 30 second under 3 eighths of an inch. And that's done on purpose so that we don't bottom out in the groove, so that we don't have any clearance issues. But what we do have here is if we measure this, it's 30 and 5 eighths. So if we go back and look at our cabinet, and we measure from here to here, we're going to see it's 30 and 5 eighths. So this allows us to use the back to square up the cabinet. So it's meant to bottom up, bottom out against the shoulder back here, but not bottom out in the groove. So our groove's 3 eighths of an inch deep, but our tongue's only 11 30 seconds. So uh, our other options that we can do are uh, we can do uh, inset sides only or inset top and bottom. So let me just do inset sides only, keep our parameters the same. Actually, we'll switch this to a quarter inch tongue and leave our groove depth at three eighths of an inch. So I'm going to just redraw this cabinet. Right click, Cab Writer, redraw selected cabinets. Use the stored defaults, no. And uh, go back to our carcass here. So now we can see that our bottom or our back goes top to bottom and we have the same tongue here and here we can see a little more clearly how our, our shoulder bottoms out but the tongue does not in the groove so that gives us a little clearance because if we tried to cut that too close we might actually hit the end of the tongue before we hit the shoulder. Um, now, this can come in handy, this uh, particular situation um, can come in handy when we want to do some other 
joinery here for the carcass. So right now, and we'll show you that, let me just unlock this. If I move this carcass side out, you can see we're just using butt joints for the uh, stretchers and the bottom of the cabinet. Uh, but we've got um, we've got a, a groove in the back in the cabinet side here, going all the way up and down for the back. You can see back here. So um, if I want to, we've also got some new options now for the uh, carcass joinery for the tops and bottoms and stretchers. Right now we're at a butt joint, but if we go to inset, we've got some parameters here that we can we can set. So um, this is going to give us basically a um, uh, a qualified tenon or um, a tenon and uh, rabbit or, or or socket kind of construction, and we can do a blind uh, or basically a dado and a rabbit or a um, a tongue, whichever way you want to describe it. I'll show you here in a second. But we can either have a blind dado, uh, so we can have a setback from the front and rear. I'll show you that first. And uh, our pocket width. So a pocket is anything that's basically carved into a piece. So a dado, a groove, uh, a rabbit is considered a pocket. So the, the width of that pocket will be 3 eighths, and the depth of the pocket will be 3 eighths. Because uh, we have three quarter inch tops and bottoms, so uh, let's just see what this looks like if I do this. And we're going to redraw the, the selected cabinets. Uh, use the stored default. No. All right. We're going to look at the carcass again. And this time, if we turn it around here unlock this side and move it away, we are going to see something a little different here. We're going to see that we've got a pocket here that's set back from uh, the front by a half an inch, which is what we told it to do, and from the rear by a half an inch. And that's a half an inch from the groove that we've got in there. And same um, if we look over here, now we've got a tongue that is on the uh, cabinet bottom. And again, if we measure that, it's going to come up a little shorter than our 3 eighths of an inch so that we don't bottom out. And we get the same thing with our stretchers. Zoom, zoom extents here. Move, move over. And we can see we've got the same thing on our top. And any construction holes that we have in there still go in. We saw that down here. Uh, it goes right through. So when we put that tongue and groove together, we can put our screws right in through those holes and screw the cabinet together. So. Uh, let me uh, show you if we don't have those side setbacks. Um, so we don't have, we put this as zero inches and zero inches and redraw the cabinet. And just look at the carcass. We can see now that our tenon comes all the way through the front. So now one thing that we have to be careful of, we give you a lot of flexibility here. So let's say we did uh, inset full. Um, and kept this construction method here and redraw this cabinet. Store defaults no. All right, look at the carcass.
carcass. So we've got a full inset on the back. Let me unlock this and pull it away. And everything looks fine, right? Uh, let me just pull this away a little further. We've got an inset back. And it works okay on this stretcher here, except for if this was going to a CNC, we got a bit of a problem. Because in order to mill this tongue, we have to have this part face up on the CNC bed. And so that, that would mill fine, but we could not mill this groove down here. And that's the same problem we have on the, the bottom of the cabinet. So unless you have a way of milling both sides of a part, um, this construction method uh, with this particular combination of things uh, won't work so well. So you have to just be careful. There's a lot of flexibility here, but you got to make sure that you understand what you're doing. And if you have a CNC, which is most of the time uh, what you'll be using with something like this, then you need to uh, make sure you understand what you're doing. So notice that we still have a setback here on the tenon on each side. Even though we said no setback. And the reason for that is if we look at our carcass side here, it's more noticeable on this side. So we've got a stopped uh, we've got a stopped data over here. And by the way, this this whole concept is called a, a qualified tenon. What we've done, since we don't know the exact thickness of this plywood, we've created a uh, a tenon of a known thickness um, and a socket or a pocket for it to go into of a known width so that everything fits nicely. And you'll have to set up your CNC settings to, uh, when you do the tool pathing, um, based on your experience of how thick to actually cut this tenon, if you have to undercut it a little bit um, in order to get it to fit in here. But one of the problems is you'll notice that this is a square pocket, right? When the CNC cuts it, there's going to be a round uh, uh, part put in here. So it's going to be rounded off because it's a round bit that's cutting it. And um, depending, on, it's, going to, it's going to make a, a little piece in here uh, that won't let this tenon fit in here if we cut the tenon to its full width. So what we do is we um, make the tenon a little bit narrower on this edge here by one half of the bit diameter so that it fits in there. And the bit diameter is set under CNC setup and it's the pocket um, bit. We'll, we'll cover this uh, in a bit more detail in another video. Uh, but the cutting bit table tells what diameter bit you're going to use for outside profiles, inside profiles, and pockets. My CNC, I don't have a tool changer, so it's using the same bit for all three. But the pocket is set for a 3 8 bit. Um, so what we've done then is we've, if we look here, that's 3 16 of an inch. So we've backed this tenon off by 3 16 of an inch so that it can fit into this uh, pocket comfortably. And at this point, Cab Rider uh, is not detecting this situation where it's flush up front, and so it's still um, it's still pushing this back by half a bit diameter. If you really wanted this to be uh, different, we could unlock this, and you could pull that tenon forward and just delete this little line here, and you'd be good to go. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, when all this is happening. And, and this is very important when, in our first case, we had a setback on, on either side here. Uh, we have to bring that tenon in even narrower. So you got to make sure that your stretchers are wide enough so you still have some sort of a tenon left on here when you're done. So that's it. That's the new construction methods for carcasses. Again, lots of flexibility, but just uh, make sure you double check everything 
at least the first couple times you do it to make sure it's doing exactly what you think it's doing.